Right. Hi, Ryan. Hi, Rob. What is going on here? Um, okay, gentlemen, Rob Ryan Red Podcast with Rob and Ryan, no rich, riches in Japan, unfortunately, gentlemen. So I'm very sorry I offer his sincerest apologies. Gentlemen, how are we? Pretty good. good. Floating? Yeah. yeah. Big, big smiles, huge smiles. Even, even the smile has never seemed to have left since we saw that video of you hugging um, very normally after we won the league against Boreham Wood. What has it been like since then? <laughs> well, both of my styes are gone. I had a double sty from the stress, which I never thought would be a sentence, yeah. I would say, uh, about the, the sport of football. But uh, they've cleared up, and uh, the knot in my stomach has finally loosened a tad. I think some of the tequila in Las Vegas helped that. Um, other than that, I'm, I'm still floating. <laughs> I feel pretty good, too. I... Uh... I didn't develop any sort of uh, a- a- external physical ailment the way Rob did. I-, I hammered all of my tension and anxiety down into a, a coal-like diamond uh, that will manifest itself in some sort of future terminal illness. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, this long journey that you're going to be on with us, it seems like it's actually going to be quite debilitating and probably not good for any of us. Yeah. I, I think, I think you know, Rob and I both, I don't, I think Rob and I both, I, I, hope, I feel I'm going to speak for you, Rob, when I say this, but I think we both greatly underestimated how much of the emotion and uh, yearning uh, for that that moment we experienced, uh, evidently live on camera uh, at the race course ground when we gained promotion, how much of it we were caring for the town. I think um, ultimately that sort of uh, uh, was something I, I don't I don't know that I I completely. Um, uh, uh, I, I was completely able to sort of express, or even to myself, uh, as it was happening. So I think I think it's it's taken a little while to let that sink in. But man, I, I remember that moment where that whistle blew, um, and it was just. I think Rob, you described it as our soul left our bodies, which is what it felt. Like. <laughs> it really felt like. Is this what dying feels like? Uh, it was a pretty extraordinary moment in every sense of the term. Well, I have some questions because your time is very precious and lots of people ask me all the th- sorts of things. And one of them is we so- we see you at the ground wearing lots of amazing merchandise, hats, jackets, all these things. Are they one staple piece or are we ever going to be able to get our hands and, and try and dress and look like you two fine gentlemen? <laughs> the- well, I mean, it started with the hats last year. I mean, the, even the hat that Ryan's wearing and the one that I wear from almost always um we just got made as one-offs and then uh this, the club came to us in the store and said hey let's figure out a way we, we, we think people would buy this uh kind of merchandise so who knows i mean i mm-hmm. i got this the last um this uh this bracelet nice. here um that was given to me actually given to ryan to give to me by um a, a little girl in the stands and I, don't, I, don't, I, never, I never got her name but i think we could sell these my uh, uh, her name was Humphrey yeah. Carr. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, <laughs> mine, mine was stolen by my daughter. Um, to a lord over her in the future, I imagine. But um, yeah, that my this hat is going to be available. I know we're making a bunch of these. Um, and then the other stuff is really actually like the jacket I wear is just a jacket I owned, and I sewed a Rexham patch on it. It had some laminate Rexham AFD on the back. I was like, I may as well, you know, use utilize one of my own jackets. But uh and then I think Rob yeah, has something similar. Uh but we'll see. Hopefully we'll find something that makes sense for the club and something we can do sustainably and we'll yeah we'll bring it to the to the shop. Well I just collect stuff and uh, with the mind I'm eventually gonna build a big Rexham man cave in my house whenever whenever that is. Are you what are you doing with all the stuff you collect? Because First time you came over, you, you took a bit of the pitch with you. You you went and got mm-hmm. Ben Foster's jersey. What are you building? What kind of... Are Blake and the girls letting you make some sort of Wrexham museum at home? What is going on? Blake, Blake and the girls are, are the engine for it half the time. I mean, it's my, my daughters are the ones that are always reminding me, Dad, grab some of the pitch when you walk across it again. And, you know, but I also recognize that the, the race course ground is is in it in, in, in certain senses, holy ground, you know, and I... I so I like bringing a little piece of that home with me every time. But um, yeah, I'm, I guess I'm not really building a man cave so much, a Rex of man cave. I think it, at this point, it's just my house. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> There's any death. It's stuff's going kind of wherever I, you know, choose. But Rex, it's one of the greatest prides of my life. So why wouldn't I? 
it's funny that you mentioned the collectible because because right right off camera here now this will mean nothing to the listeners but you can see in here i have a this is a a a, a, a bit of the of the pitch after our my first win which if you recall correctly came <laughs> way too late uh, um so i have that preserved i have a plate that's coming for it and then this one which i keep nearby this uh looks like paraphernalia um it really does really look like weed. weed yeah it does this is also just a pitch from the ladies win from the ladies winning the uh so yeah i'm, I'm we're taking keepsakes every every time we go what's what uh, i don't know is, is rob actually smokes that grass when he gets home yeah. that's why there's not much left that's why there's only a yeah. tiny tiny amount left well it, tur it turns out that shell puts all the right chemicals in it to to keep you up keep it down whatever you <laughs> like <laughs> yeah he does a great job talking of the race course there's a couple of things about you know building we're going to get the cot that's going to start very soon but one of the questions we always get asked why are we at with a training ground because eventually we want to bring through all the youngsters it's been in the works been a conversation for a while i know speaking to humphrey where are we at with that we are working on that pretty much daily. Um, that that's a you know that, that uh, the training ground is not something that you you know you take trivially, right? So it's it's something that is going to need to exist for you know decades, if not centuries, to come. So uh, it's something Rob and I have been working on. Well, we've been working on that since the last e last year, really. I mean, you know, in earliest, it, 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 it was, it was, I don't know if it was officially a part of the mission statement. I can't remember, but I know it was something that we focused on very early, um, as, as was the cop as, as you know, and as well documented. Um, but it's funny that you asked that, that, that question, Nate, because probably every other morning, one of us will text that to the board. Where are we with the, with the training ground? Um, and I know that we've been making giant strides forward, but we don't have anything concrete yet, but we're circling a few things. I, I can't confirm. I have no idea. Uh, I'm not in your WhatsApp group, so I have not been snooping around uh, either of your texts. I'm sure uh, lots of the players talk about these infamous WhatsApp groups, the defenders, the strikers, WhatsApp groups. Um, talking of messages then, uh, Wrexham, Paul Rudd was there at the end. We've had Emma Corrin. We've had all these different people. Will Ferrell. Who else is, is, is going to be begging you for a ticket because it's the hottest ticket in town right now? Are we going to get anyone on this US tour or, or back at the race course? Well, the good news is we're playing in in Los Angeles, um, which makes things a lot easier because celebrities don't like to travel outside of the thirty mile zone. So that'll be helpful. Yeah. Um, but also, I mean, I think we, we we had a we had an unofficial rule that we didn't stick to, Ryan, after we lost at um, at Wembley last year in the FA in the FA Trophy final. We decided no more celebrities because they were just a bad <laughs> bad bad luck charm. But I guess we don't have oh. to worry about that anymore. Yeah, it sort of worked out. Will 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 saw a great game. I know that. Um, Emma saw an amazing match uh, as well. I mean, I it, 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 Glenn and it, Charlie and Caitlin. Yeah, Glenn and Charlie and Caitlin saw a great one. Um, yeah, we've had we, yeah Paul and then of course Paul and Joe Rousseau. They saw just the the one to end it. I mean, that was just the most incredible thing. And yet, only Charlie was the one to sort of try out for the team with his with his race. None of the others did. <laughs> He he also was the only one to get busted drinking alcohol, and I because he didn't know. I mean, what people truly don't understand is Americans. We we don't understand that rule. We didn't know that that was a rule. So he was sitting out in the box and he was drinking a beer, and I nobody noticed it or they just didn't say anything. And somebody took a still frame and texted it to me from the from the broadcast and saying, "Hey, get your boy, get your boy off the balcony. You're going to get a fine." And of course, he ran back inside because he had no idea what the what the what the law was, but that uh, that'll be something he gets to take to his grave. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. The, the, you know, the race course is super special. We're already having withdrawal symptoms from being. I'm sure you're the same. What what is the eventual vision for that? Because we're getting a cop, which is very exciting. But are, are there plans in your heads to to develop it even further? I mean, yeah, we, <laughs> we, we <laughs> no, our that, greatest uh, the, our uh, greatest goal is to our greatest goal is to redevelop the the opposite end of the cop. I guess that's, what do we call that end? It's everyone has a different name for it, so I'm not sure. The tech the tech end we go the with tech end tech yeah. end. Yeah, our 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 dream is to have two apartments in there. <laughs> Shoot, you'd so, be like yeah. yeah. In late yeah. Norway, they've just gone to league one. They have some flats built into the stadium that you can uh, yeah. wake up and look out on on there. Uh, you imagine yes, that, that that would be. I don't know. I feel like I'd be, I, I wouldn't be able to go to sleep. I find it hard to sleep looking out on the pitch at night. Um, but 
one, I, I, a friend of mine texted me the day that said, JJ Watt is going to come for your crown now he's investing in Burnley. What was the conversation there with him? Because I know that he sort of sought your advice and you, uh, you're going to stay on top, you two? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't I don't pretend to be some kind of uh, football oracle. I mean, I think that's kind of been both Rob and our secret weapon, secret weapon as, as we uh, progress through this. Um, but, I, you know, I just told JJ everything I could possibly tell him about my experience with football ownership, which might not be the same as his experience. Um, you know, Rob and I have always sort of looked at ourselves as really more stewards for the club as opposed to like owners, you know, we take our, our role as chairman very, very, very seriously. Um, so yeah, I just, I kind of, you know, I, my biggest advice to JJ was just to listen, you know, really try to listen as much as you can. You know, it's, 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 it's to, particularly JJ comes from, you know, his entire life has been sport. So I, I imagine he has a really, you know, formulated opinion and idea of, of how sport, massive sports entities uh, work. And, and he's probably bringing a lot of experience to the table. But, uh, you know, my, my only real advice was just to really listen. Because these are, you know, te- these these clubs are incredibly tethered to communities. And you, you have to, uh, you have to go part and parcel with the community and everything you do. Rob, you know, I don't think our podcast money is going to stretch to ever buying a football team, not yet anyway, but what is it like owning a team? Because it must be, as a massive sports fan, it must be amazing. It must be, you're smiling out, it must be amazing. It's, a, it's the greatest joy of my professional life. I, I mean, it, I, I feel like a child, a 46-year-old child uh, on a consistent basis. Every time I get a notification that 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 someone has responded on one of those shadowy text chains that you alluded to earlier, I get a little, a little, a little spark of serotonin in, in my brain. It's just, and my heart flutters and I get, and I just, it's just a, a roller coaster ride. And, and it's just been, um, it's been incredible, hard, hard to, hard to put words to. Yeah. There we go. I think that's my cue to pass it back to the other fellas. There you go, gentlemen, welcome back. Thank you so much, both of you. That uh, I, I very much enjoyed your your mementos that you've got. Thank <laughs> you, and, th- and thank you for picking up the mantle for Rich. It feels like he's always leaving and going somewhere. So I, yeah, I, I'd, I'd like to be go- dicking around in Japan right about now. That sounds nice. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I wouldn't I want real, you to but... know that I appreciate you putting in the work. It says you two both yeah. prefer me, which is what you're saying, and I will very much play back to Rich. So that's that's right. that's as you thing. should. It means a lot. Is your right? 